My name's Carol Shelby, and performance is my business. The British knew what a sports car was, and I think Shelby, having driven all those cars throughout the 50s, understood that. It was really his goal to get a British sports car that drove well with an American power. He put an American V8 in it, it was a whole different world. And that's why the Cobra did so well. Ian Garrett is the father of the Sunbeam Tiger. He was West Coast manager of Roots Motors. He saw the success that Shelby American was having in LA with the Cobra, just decimating everyone. Jack Brabham, among others, who'd been driving the Sunbeams, Alpines, had been begging for more power. And that the small block Ford fit. This mystery car showed up in the shop. Nobody seemed to know what it was doing. Why is an Alpine sitting here at Shelby American? When Ian Garrett had Carol Shelby develop the prototype, they insisted it be done in secrecy, so there was a back room in the building at Venice, and that's where George Boskoff uh, worked on the car. Um, Shelby did a, really a nice job. The first prototype went, went to Ken Miles, and that was just a proof of concept, kind of. They gave Ken Miles a few hundred dollars, they gave Shelby a few thousand dollars, so there was a big difference in terms of the quality of the build. The Shelby prototype was delivered to the Wrighton Works, so my grandfather could see it for the first time. He hopped in the car, he told my Uncle Brown to sit next to him, and he told the chauffeur to follow them in the Humber. Well, after a short while, the tiger disappeared over the horizon, not to be seen for some time. When he got back, he said, OK, let's make this car. Roots were no stranger to competition. They'd, they'd had three years of running the Alpines there, so how much harder can it possibly be? Shelby started off with a chassis coming from a race derivative car, and Roots used a chassis developed for a Hillman Husky. Roots' obsession with the race car being like really close to the road car, that's, that was one of its biggest limitations. The Le Mans Coupes were actually running, not in the GT class, they were running the prototype class. So they could run a uh, 289 rather than a 260. But Shelby provided the motors, and in his coupes, he ran 289s. The car being so much heavier um, than the Cobra, it was never going to trouble even with a 289. I know Peter Proctor says that went to the test weekend, and had all the problems, came back for the race, uh, nothing, nothing had been fixed. I don't think uh, the British really had an understanding of the V8 engines at that point in time and all the dynamics that went into them. How it was presented in the Mars 64, I didn't have a hope, not even close. We knew it was going to be a hard race for us. Uh, the big worry, I think, was the oil pressure. And of course, very soon into the race, number eight um, had a big engine blow out, and we sold it on till one o'clock in the morning. Then we were down to 18th, and with a, a strong possibility of finishing in the top 10, I think we could have achieved that if the car had finished, but it was not to be. The new Mustang-based GT350 will compete against the E-Type Jags, the Sunbeam Tigers, and Corvettes. It was hugely important for them to race the car, because when you walked up to a dealership, the Alpine and the Tiger looked identical. The only difference was the side trim. Yeah, by 64, when the Sunbeam comes back, you know, for Lou Spencer to race, yeah, the Shelby American shop is, is humming. Shelby American was loaded with talent, but it wasn't put in force on the Sunbeam Tiger. I mean, otherwise I probably wouldn't have been put on the job because <laughs> it was not a high priority job. Ian Garrett and Roots decided to start another race car in conjunction with Hollywood Sports Car and their legendary uh, mechanic, Don Spencer. He went nuts, completely re-engineered the car and built it into a dominant B production car. With Jim Adams behind the wheel, they had a winning combination. The 74 car, they didn't really get uh, the recognition that uh, the uh, Hollywood sports car 
received. But Roots was very happy with him because they were all over the country and tens of thousands of people were seeing them on the Sundays and buying cars on Monday. And that was what Roots' whole plan was. The Tiger is aspirational. It's a car you could afford because you couldn't afford a Cobra. Even at the time, they were expensive, way more. You really couldn't get the Cobras, and the Tigers were available. Anything associated with Carroll Shelby, that was, that was a real deal. That was Carroll Shelby's catch line, Unleash the Tiger. The results from the Geneva Rally are to use our first major outing. We won the class and then we won the team award. It just showed the rest of the rally field that we were here to stay. We were going to, you know, really win stuff. And at last Roots had got a car that was going to be really up there with the rest of them. I think they were judged to be a success, not least because the press loved them. Chrysler wanted to get into the European market Roots needed investment, so they were natural partners for each other. Once Chrysler had got involved, you knew the Tiger's days were numbered. They weren't going to tolerate a model in their range with a Ford engine. It's a missile in a straight line. It's a good all-rounder. Uh, and want to take the fight to the Cobras and the lightweight e types It's so obvious that they are the proper original things and they're, you know, it's hugely special they're here. They're, they're proper old Lamar cars. About 5.7 litres, produces around 600 horsepower um, and goes like a rocket. The, the uh, Sunbeam Tiger. The Tiger is on the racetracks and it's on the racetracks to stay in the classic car world. When I went out, I went out to win, and I thought, this is the car for me. It's not a poor man's Cobra. It's a something tiger. It stands on its own. 